Okay. Let's move on to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. We looked at 4 through 7 and glance backwards to see that we're up, uh, cognizant of the context as we approach 2, 8, 9, and 10. Make sure we're not diverting from what the author's writing. So 8 through 10, for by grace you are having been saved, literally, you are saved having been saved, through faith. And this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, that no one may boast. For, you, for we are his workmanship. Once we have believed, we become believers, having been saved. We are now his workmanship, having been created in that moment in Christ Jesus. We're part of Christ now for good works. Now we're, the duty is to do good works. Yet we still, as we looked at this, have a propensity to do evil. Nevertheless, we have our assignment. And as we are faithful to it, so much the more will we be, will we be blessed in eternity. And these good works God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. A whole set of epistles is there explaining all those in the New Testament. And we get glean a little bit as the disciples walked with Jesus in the first century. Mainly though in the epistles, especially by Paul. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Paul further declared the reason for the riches of God's grace being bestowed upon those who have believed in Christ Jesus for redemption, being purchased out of the slave market of sin and into the glorious possession, becoming the glorious possession of Jesus Christ through the glory of Christ. For redemption and salvation unto, unto forgiveness of trespasses and unto eternal life in heaven. And we looked at some manuscript evidence. Let's go to the commentary on this. Ephesians 1, 1 to 7, Paul wrote, are the riches of God's grace toward those who believed in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1, 1 to 7. Paul, apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus, Laodicea, Colossia, and all over the world, even till today. All believers are in view here. Even, that is to say, to the believing ones in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who did bless us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. For he chose us in him. Wow. He chose me through no merit, because it says, for by grace, unmerited favor. He chose us to be in him, in his Son, before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by grace, Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, of which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved one. Whatever we, we could be blessed, we got blessed through Jesus Christ, because we're in him now, in whom we have redemption through his blood, through his sacrifice for sins on the cross, and thereby the forgiveness of our trespasses, all our sins according to the riches of his grace and not according to how well we perform. And Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 that those who are faithful in Christ Jesus had heard the word of the truth, the good news of their salvation, in whom Christ, also having believed, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise of redemption unto eternal life. Here it is. In whom, in Christ, you also having heard the word of the truth, the gospel, the good news of your salvation, in whom, in Christ, also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the, of the promise of redemption unto eternal life, who, which, is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, God's possession, the believer, to the praise of his glory. And he wrote in Ephesians 1.18 of his glory for believers that they would realize in their temporal lives 
what will be the riches of the glory of God's inheritance in them. Ephesians 1.18, I, Paul, pray that the eyes of your heart, the mentality, the heart, the mind, your understanding, having been enlightened, that you may know what is the sure hope. Alpibe means in Greek, means a sure hope, not just I hope. Sure hope of his calling, which are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Paul wrote again of his God's mercy and great love, which he will show in the ages that are coming. The exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us. We don't seem to be having that shown about us now. Mostly it's persecution and uh, isolation. But obviously in the beginning of the millennial rule, when we are taken back home before that begins, when Christ raptures us back, and we receive our glorified bodies and uh, the uh, assessment of our rewards in heaven. And we come back with him in a second coming. Then that age begins, and our God's mercy and great love will he show us in the ages to come, beginning the millennial rule, toward those who have believed in Christ by means of what Christ did for them. But for God, but God being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even being dead in trespasses and sins, in sins and trespasses, did make us alive together with Christ, by grace you are having been saved, and raised up us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places. We're already considered, already seated in the heavenly places, an actual position in heaven, established and guaranteed for us by God in Christ Jesus, not just flying up in the outer stratosphere with the birds, that he might show in, in the ages that are coming the exceeding riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and the reason, the cause, for all of that is in view in Ephesians chapters 1 and 2, is stipulated in Ephesians 2, 5c. See the underlying italics above, which added is further explained in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 below, beginning with the key word gar, rented for, meaning because, because of this, which follows, for, because of this, or all of this, it is only by the grace, the unmerited favor, the undeserved kindness of God, that one is saved unto eternal life in the heavenly places. Heavenly places. Where else are we going? Yes, there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And there will be a new Jerusalem that will come down probably about a mile above the, the physical city of Jerusalem on the planet. And that will be our dwelling place. But thereafter, we'll have other dwelling places which are all defined as the heavenlies. Up where the stars are. We will have more power than the angelic beings have had. And we'll be able to, of course, travel through the heavenlies. You want to go see the planets with stars and so on. So for by grace you are having been saved through faith. And this salvation, this is neuter, so it, this salvation, not fe uh, feminine, uh, which is, would be then referring to faith, but the salvation, which is neuter, not of yourselves. Salvation is not of yourselves. The faith is of yourselves. That's the people say, well, you didn't believe. God made you believe. No, he didn't. Matter of fact, it says in John 1, 12 to 13, I had to say this a couple of times. John 1, 12 to 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So to receive him is, means to believe in his name, in the name of Christ for salvation. Who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You're born of God from above. That's because you believe first. Not like the Calvinists where you say God transforms you into a resurrection body being. And then you're born, born again. And then you choose to believe in your own volition. No, you choose to believe of your own volition first. And that by thereby believing, you're saved through faith. Right. So you have to do the faith before you're saved. So the Greek phrase, rendered for by grace, the first phrase of Ephesians 2.8, further explains the message of Ephesians 1, 1 to 2, 7, about the display of the riches of God's grace upon those who have believed in Christ Jesus for redemption, salvation, and to forgiveness of trespasses or sins, and or sins, and unto eternal life in heaven. The phrase emphasizes that it is only by his, the grace 
the unmerited favor, not having done anything to deserve the undeserved kindness of God, that anyone is saved unto eternal life in the heavenly places. The unmerited, undeserved characteristic of God's saving grace is corroborated by the rest of verses 8 and 9, which indicate that God's saving grace is not due to anything that comes from the one being saved. It is a gift. It is not of works of any kind. Not by works, it says so. So that no one is in a position to boast about receiving salvation for anything that one contributed. Even the faith that is expressed by an individual to receive salvation to eternal life is by definition and context of no meritable value to that individual relative to making eternal life other than as a free gift. So you can do a lot of good stuff. A lot of people say, look at that guy. Look at He's so faithful as a Christian. But there are a lot of imperfections in that, and God, in his grace, has to perfect that, its value, and takes out the sins and the, uh, the mistakes and the incompleteness of it and makes it complete. And you get fully blessed as if you did it perfectly. That's amazing. And I take a look at that. 1 John 1 9. How do you stay in fellowship with God? If we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, the ones we confess, we believers, because this is an epistle addressed only to believers, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you confess the few sins that you know about. Maybe you think uh, arrogantly that you've done a lot of perfect things, and you confess the things that are a little bit uh, flawed, but all those things are probably needing uh, correction. And, and he's, uh, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and you get credited for doing a perfect job. Isn't that amazing? So, the Greek words rendered, you are having been saved, convey as they do in verse 5, Ephesians 2, 5, the sense of a completed action in the past with ongoing present results forever in those who have believed in Christ Jesus being saved unto eternal life in heaven. And we've already established the location is in the heavenlies. Of course, the earth on a millennial rule will be declared part of heaven and perfected once uh, only, only believers in the new heavens and the new earth will exist. On, on earth and in the universe. So, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, 2, 8, For by grace you are having been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, this salvation of yourselves, is the gift of God, not of works, that no one may boast. So you can't say, well, look, look at all the stuff I've done. No. You, you've done some stuff, and God will credit you. But the believing and all the things you did can't be credited towards your salvation. You're trusting in Christ, doing it all for you. That's what you do. But then in 2.10, it says we are then set apart to do good works. And we then, as we conduct our Christian life, move on to the best we can and recognize through study when we fall short, which is often, confess it, and it's declared approved, forgiven, perfect. The Greek words, for by grace, are followed by the Greek words rendered, you are having been saved. The Greek verb is present tense, rendered you are. And the Greek verb rendered is uh, sesos menoi, is a perfect participle rendered having been saved. The combination of these verbs, two together in a phrase, has, as they do in verse 5, the sense of a completed action in the past when an individual first began to express his faith and with ongoing present results forever salvation for those who have believed in Christ Jesus being saved unto eternal life in heaven from the moment when one expressed faith in him whether continuous or not so the moment that you express that faith it's you are saved having been saved in the present you are saved in the present moment because in the moment in the past is before that and thereafter as soon as you started believing you have been saved in perfect ongoing present results forever perfect tense Here's Ephesians 1, 1 and 2, 6. Paul, apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. To the saints who are at Ephesus, Laodicea, Colossae, and even that is to say to the believing ones in Christ Jesus, all believers. And God raised us up with him, Christ Jesus, and seated us 
with him in the heavenly places, literally heavenlies, 